Hello everyone, we're going to start to use some laws of logarithms now. So there's a few things that we need to be able to do and that is we will either use the words expand or combine. Sometimes we'll say condense logarithms into a single logarithm. This will let us solve things that we were unable to solve before and also make problems a lot easier to deal with. So there are three rules that you need to know. The first rule is that if you are multiplying on the inside of a logarithm, we call this the argument, if you're if the argument is a product, then you can expand multiplication into the addition of two logarithms. Notice it's the same base, base A, base A, base A, but instead of A times B on the inside of one logarithm, we expand that into two logarithms that are being added. So multiplication expands into addition. The reverse of that would be to say that the addition condenses into multiplication. So here we have a Quotient, so division, division expands into subtraction. So multiplication expands into addition, division expands into subtraction. And the last rule is if you have an exponent inside a logarithm, you can actually bring that out front of the logarithm. So this a to the c power is the same as c times the logarithm of base a of a. <clears throat> so let's put a couple of these together and see if we can simplify them. Um, this one says the base 4 log of 2 plus the base 4 log of 32. That's addition. So what I'm going to do is condense this into a single logarithm. And instead of uh, 2 plus the two, adding here, it's going to be 2 times 32. The addition condenses into multiplication. So this is the base 4 log of 64, which is 3, because 4 to the third is 64. So this whole thing equals 3. Well, let's try another one. This is division. Or this is subtraction, so that will condense into division. So this is the base 2 log of 80 divided by 5. So the base 2 log of, let's see, what's that? Is that 16? So if you do the base 2 log of 16, 2 to the 4th is 16, so that equals 4. 2 to the 4th is 16. One more, you've got negative one third on the outside of a logarithm. So the exponent rule says you can put that inside the logarithm like that. It was on the outside, now it'll be on the inside as an exponent. So that is the, remember this is the cube root of 8, which is 2, and since it's negative, this is like saying the log of 1 half. So that's actually a decimal that I can't do. 10 to the sum power is 1 half. I would need to do uh, a calculator for that. So we're going to need a calculator. If I say the log of 1 half, log of 0.5, the answer is point, negative 0.301 negative point three oh one so it's about negative point three oh one okay that's ex uh, condensing I'm sorry that's taking two logarithms and condensing them into a single logarithm what if we go the other way and I take one logarithm and I'm asked to expand it so the first thing is this is multiplication so that will expand into addition it's the sum of two logarithms the, lo the log of two, six plus the log of x um, I'll do the same thing here, but this is going to be two steps. First, I'll expand into addition. And then the next thing I can do is bring these exponents out. So that's 3 times the base 5 log of x plus 6 times the base 5 log of y. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a few steps here. First, I'll say uh, ab minus, whoa, hold on, minus the natural log of the cube root of c. I think that's a cube root. So then I can expand this into addition, the natural log of A plus the natural log of B minus the natural log of... Another way of writing that would be C to the one-third. And the reason that matters is because now I can bring the exponent out. So I have the natural log of A plus the natural log of B minus one-third times the natural log of C. So you have to go through a bunch of steps, but eventually we have this thing completely expanded. You have no exponents inside. You have no products and no quotients on the inside of the logarithm. Uh, what if we are, uh, here's some more combined problems, I guess, so we'll condense in some more. If I want to condense, let's start with putting the exponents back in. So this is log of x cubed plus log of x plus 1, the quantity to the 1 half. That means square root. Uh, but now I have addition. Two logs are being added, so I will condense that into multiplication. And I'm going to write it like this, because this is the square root of x plus 1. I just like that better natural log of s cubed, so the exponent goes in, 
plus natural log of t to the 1 half, exponent goes in, minus natural log of t squared plus 1, exponent goes in to the fourth. So first, the exponents go inside the logarithms. That's the first thing I did. Now, I'll look for anything I can condense. This is addition, so that can condense into multiplication. So times t, uh, let's write it as radical t, because that's what t to the 1 half is minus the natural log of t squared plus 1 to the fourth. And so now I have subtraction, and subtraction condenses into division. So this is s cubed radical t over this t squared plus 1 all to the fourth power. So that's messy, but it's more just the exercise of can you put that whole thing together using the rules. Okay, so that's about as bad as they get, but that's all the rules in one problem. So kind of cool, useful. Uh, change of base formula, this is something that we don't need to do a ton of because we have smart calculators, but there is a way to type this in, the base 8 log of 5, using the change of base formula. It doesn't matter what base you use, you can say the log of 5 over the log of 8, which is the same as saying the natural log of 5 over the natural log of 8. It doesn't matter what the base is, you can split this apart into two logs, and then you can evaluate it. So let me show you. The, the fancy way to do it is on your calculator. We want the base, which one are we doing? Base 8 log of 5. But if you don't have a fancy calculator, you can say the log of 5, so the log of the argument, divided by the log of the base. Same thing. You can do the same thing with natural log, divided by natural log. It doesn't actually matter what the base is. That's the cool thing about the change of base formula. These are all 0.774. Uh, the other one is base 9 log of 20, so you could type that in as the log of 20 over the log of 9 to get the decimal, and the log of 20 over 9, the log of 20 divided by the log of 9 is 1.3634. 1 1.3634. 1 1.3634. Okay, so those are our rules. Now I'm going to do a few of a few types of problems with those. Um, here's a word problem where <clears throat> I give you an equation that looks kind of messy, but what we're going to do is, before I read all this, this talks about wealth distribution, I'm going to condense this. So right now you have subtraction, so that's the same as condensing it into division. So this would be, well actually, this is log of w to the k power, if you put the k in there, so c divided by w to the k. The reason that helps you is because now you have the log of something on both sides, that means these arguments have to be the same. P has to equal C over W to the K. And now for this problem, it says, based on this theory of wealth distribution, how many people will have 10 million or more? I'm going to plug things in. P is C is 8,000, so we have 8,000 people. W is $2 million, so 2 to the K. K is 2.1. And I want to know how many people have 10 million or more. Um, actually, no, W is the wealth level. This is 10. Use part A to find how many people have $2 million or more. So I have W is the wealth level, how much money a person has. Oh, wait, we want to do 10 and 2. There's two questions. That's why I'm like, what's happening? 8,000 divided by 2 to the 2.1. So if I want to find 2 million, I'll plug in 2. If I want to find 10 million, I'll plug in 10. But it says there's 8,000 people. C is 8,000. And we're going to go ahead and just use the calculator for this. 8,000 divided by 2 to the 2.1. And then 8,000 divided by 10 to the 2.1. 10 to the 2.1. So... If you are trying to measure how many people have $10 million, this is saying it's about 64 people would have $10 million or more. The most important thing here I'm concerned about is can you condense the logs? We're going to ask better word problems than that. Let's do a couple of practice problems just to make sure we have, you should have these practice problems with you. So uh, I'm going to go through these pretty quick. These are condensed problems. So the first thing I'll do is put the exponent back in. This is the base 5 log of 10 minus the base 5 log of 3 squared is 9, and then I can condense that into subtraction condenses into division, so 10 over 9. Put the 2 back in there, now it's u squared, just put the 2 on the inside. 
log base 3 of u to the fourth minus log base 3 of v to the fourth. So I'll put the exponents in. Then I have subtraction. So I will condense that into division. So u to the fourth over v to the fourth. You could write it like this u over v to the fourth. Either one of these is fine. Uh, base 3 log, or base 9 log of 3 plus the base 9 log of, if you put the 2 in there, 2 squared is now 4. And then this will be the base 9 log of multiplication. The addition condenses into multiplication, so the base 9 log of 12. If we expand, first thing I'll do is deal with the fraction. So the base 4 log of 6 minus the base 4 log of 11 squared. And then I'll bring the exponent out. So 2 times the base 4 log of 11. Uh, let's see, same idea. Base 7 log of A minus base 7 log of B to the 4th. And then I will bring the 4 down. So the base 7 log of B. This is a product. We know that products expand to addition. So the base 8 log of U plus the base 8 log of V plus the base 8 log of W. And then this is almost the exact same question. I don't know why there's two of these in here. Plus log of 9b plus log of 9c. So expanding using the rules, multiplication expands into addition. Solving. So this is where things get a little more interesting. And you have two logarithms. You need to condense them before we do anything. So I'm going to condense these into a single logarithm. And that will be using division because it's subtraction condenses into division. And now I have one log, so I can write this as an exponent. 8 to the first equals x over 2. And if you multiply both sides by 2, that means x has to be 16. So once you get to here, you rewrite it as an exponent. 8 to the first equals x over 2. Then you solve. x equals 16. Uh, let's condense this one. This is the base 6 log of 4, and then this multiplication now, 4x squared equals 2. Condense the addition into multiplication. Now we'll write it 6 squared equals 4x squared. 6 squared equals 4x squared. 36 equals 4x squared. Divide both sides by 4. 9 equals x squared, so x equals plus or minus 3. And I think it can be both. It can be negative 3. You'd be okay. You're not taking the log of a negative. What if it's subtraction? There's logs on both sides. First, we'll condense the left side. And on the right side, I can't really do anything. But I can say, now that you have the base 9 log on both sides, it's like, what if we just kind of ignore the logs and set the arguments equal to each other? Then x over 2 has to be 65. So x has to be 130. One more, base 3 log of x divided by 5 equals 2, because subtraction condenses into division. 3 squared equals x over 5. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. So you can see that by condensing the logarithms, we can make these problems quite a bit easier. But if you don't have those, then if you don't have the rules, then you can't condense them and you kind of get stuck. So it's important that you guys understand how to put them together so that you can then solve. And that's really where I want us to be. So if you got your practice done, keep working on that. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button.